Amen. 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 Yes. Uh, Tukoza buwana ni kwa pati na wara nyingine. Last week tuliko hapa. Nikuja na mbibu yangu. Tena leo na kuja na hea hapa. And uh, we thank God that we have the grace to serve God. And uh, uh, many other words. Mbibu yangu ni tusaidia. Yes. So many other times that the world says that pastors, kids are always spoiled children. But in our family, we refused to have that decree on us. We are three in our family, three children in our family, and we are all into the Lord. All of us that have grown up in Christian founded homes. Hivo ninawatia moyo wote waliokuzwa katika misingi ya Kikristo. To keep embracing God because there is a lot that is demanded of us. Ili kuendelea kumtukuza Mungu maana kuna mengi tunayodaiwa. We can take an example from Eli's sons. Tunaweza zungumzia mfano kwa the sons of Eli priest the priest Eli. Eh kwa kutoka kwa kwa yule yule Eli. Yeah um Nabi Kuhani Eli. Yes, because of their acts, the voice of God was silent in the land. So may the Lord protect all pastors, kids in the house. And give us a grace to take the gospel further than our parents would take them. Hallelujah. Amen. I am I'm going to share with us something small, so shortly, so that we are on time, so we don't stay here so long. And um, I believe God that uh, He's up to something in our dispensation. And He's ready to transfer a lot of things to us and to our generations. Before I delve into scripture, I want to start like this. Um, God showed me a strong vision, some few, some few moments back, days back. And he showed me how in this dispensation he is raising people that even never thought they would ever serve God. Na katika hiyo ni kaonyesho kwamba kuna ngazi ambayo Mungu anaopandisha watu kumtumikia kuliko vile watu walivyodhania. He showed me a lady that was a staunch prostitute. Ni kaona dada fulani ambaye alikuwa kahaba. This lady um, the last three years of her life she gave life to Christ. Na huyu dada miaka mitatu iliyopita alimpa Yesu maisha yake. Her last years to live on earth. Miaka yake ya mwisho kuishi katika dunia. Yeah, she gave her life to Christ. Akampa Yesu maisha yake. And after believing Christ, she served God tremendously for three good years. Na baada ya hapo akamtumikia Mungu kwa ukuu miaka mitatu. Time comes and she passes on. Na baadaye akaaga dunia. And she has received up in the heavens. Na alikuwa amepokelewa katika mbingu. Na God gives me the grace to meet up this lady in the third heavens and speak with her. Mungu akanipa neema ya kuzungumza na huyu dada katika angazi ya tatu. God wanted me to learn something of her. Mungu alitaka nijue jambo kumuhusu. Then I only asked her two questions. Nikamuuliza maswali mawili tu. What do you think of the life you lived before you got born again? Unafikiriaje kuhusu maisha ulioishi kabla ya kuokoka? And what do you think of the life the three years you lived after getting born again? Na unafikiriaje kuhusu maisha ulioishi miaka mitatu kabla ya kuokoka? Should me I I always had many people preach the gospel to us. Akasema kwamba nilisikia watu wengi wakituhubiria injili. People came to our streets preaching the gospel. Watu walikuja katika mitaa yetu kuhubiri injili. Others came to our homes door to door. Wengine wakaja wengine wakaja katika nyumba zetu mlango kwa mlango akihubiri. I would feel in my spirit that it is something that I wanted. Nikahisi katika roho yangu kwamba hicho ndio kile nilichohitaji. But making the decision was the hardest thing I had. Na ikawa uamuzi huo ulikuwa ugumu kwa but then the moment she chose to obey the voice and come to Christ. The Lord had used her to do 
tremendous things in this universe. It had caused multitudes to come to God within prayers. She had made many eyes be opened to the salvation of Christ within prayers. And she was like, if I had known that things were going to be this good, I wouldn't have wasted my life in prostitution. Because she has done a lot that she never thought she would ever do. And the Lord brings me back to a thought that he is calling men and women back to his service and said that uh, whether men or women uh, a prostitute is um, a phenomenon that God used to speak to me during that vision in real life it might not be a real prostitute like we may think but if, 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 if we are going to sleep here and don't recognize that there is a call of God rising up strongly we are going to miss out on the tremendous things that God is doing in this dispensation let me open our eyes a little bit just within Kenya that we are living there is a very strong divide between God, godly people and ungodly people if you browse the internet on a daily you're going to hear, see and read many things that the world is speaking against the church if you listen to BBC radio they have a program that is just the, uh, uh, given out to pull out the weaknesses of the church. And they are warning the world not to associate themselves with the church. Recently, had Pastor Benny in Cambia in Nairobi. And a lot has been spoken about Benny. And a lot is still going on about the church today. Churches are being broken down. Bishop Margaret Wanjiro's church is now. Uh, the pastor of Nene Evangelism is now in court again with battling uh, the, the, the land case. We might think it is just political and religious battles. But the devil is at work. But the Lord says that in the last days, when men when the sons of men will increase in knowledge even if we will increase but again Paul tells us that the grace of God abounds more even when there is more evil that means to tell us God is more stronger today and wants to work more harder today than he has ever done in the previous time and God has never stopped on calling upon us to stand in the gap for the purpose of the world. If the servants of God are preaching unto us prayer and coming back to the power of the Holy Ghost and reading scripture, it is because there is work that God is asking us to do. If the servants of God are preaching unto us prayer and coming back to there are more battles to fight than what you're seeing today. There are better prayers to pray apart from God. Give me food. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a lot of 
pray for apart from just asking God to pay our rent. Kuna mengi ya kuombea kuliko tu kuomba kwamba Mungu nipe kodi ya kulipa yote. There is a lot that God is requesting from us that we are not visible to. Kuna mengi ambayo Mungu anahitaji kwetu ambayo hatuonekani kwayo. So let's learn to be in a separate place that like we've been told. Hebu tusome kutokana na hali ya kisiri ambayo tumefunzwa. Let us learn to be in a separate place like we've been told. Wacha tusome kuhusiana kukaa katika siri kama vile tulivyofunzwa. Silent. Mungu hajanyamaza. I repeat God is not silent. Narudia Mungu hajanyamaza. In the times of the calling of Samuel. Wakati ambapo Samueli aliitwa. The Bible says that the voice of God was very rare in that time. Biblia inasema kwamba sauti ya Mungu ilikuwa ilikuwa kwa wakati huo. And people were no longer hearing from God. Na watu hawakuzikia kutoka kwa Mungu. Even had increased. Maovu yalitendeka. And this young boy was in the presence of God. Lakini huyu kijana alikuwa katika uwepo. And by his making the Lord voice was heard again in the city. Katika kwake sauti ya Mungu iliweza kusikika. God brought back order in the city. Na Mungu akaleta mpangilio katika city. Jesus Christ. I shall want to speak about the will and obedience. Nataka kuzungumza kuhusu utiifu na the will and obedience. Utiifu na mapenzi ya Mungu. Good. Yeah. No, no, not actually mapenzi ya Mungu, the will, the will in us. Mapenzi kwa yeah. sisi. There is there is a moment you feel like you want to do something for God. When we talk about prayer it's not because you don't want to pray. It is not because you even don't know how to pray. God has given you resources at the disposal. Mungu anamekupa rasili He has given you scriptures at the disposal. And he has provided the spirit for our guidance our brother was reading from us in the morning. Na pia tukapata kuhusiana na mambo ya kiroho kama vile ndugu alivyosoma. So there is a spirit of God to guide us into prayer. Ili tuwe na njia ya kuinuliwa katika kiroho kama huyo. The word to guide us into the word to pray about. Na neno ambalo natuongoza katika kuongoza maombi. We have a will in us to pray. Tuna penzi kwetu sisi kwa kuomba. The soul is willing. Ya roho inahitaji. The spirit is willing. Na roho inapenda. Na now when Jesus goes with his disciples. Wakati Yesu na wanafunzi wake to go and pray that his three disciples John, Peter and James eh wanafunzi wake Johanna, Petero na Yakobo and they go to pray Jesus leaves them and goes at distance as far away from them kisha Yesu anawaacha na kwenda mbali kidogo kule huko alipo he let he asked them to pray because Jesus wanted to have his own communion with God alikuwa anataka waombe ili wawe na ule uhusiano wao na Mungu and so he goes and comes and finds them sleeping in the night kisha alipotoa kule akawakuta wanalala and then he tells them wake up and pray akawaambia inukeni na Mungu so shall not be tempted ili tusije kujaribiwa it is time for temptation ni wakati wa majaribio Jesus knew there is it has risen time for more temptation Yesu alijua kwamba wakati umeinuka wa majaribio Jesus knew that it was coming to his time of living us and going back to the father Yesu alijua kwamba wakati wake wa kumewadia wa kurudi kwa baba Jesus knew there was going to be more of temptation coming to the disciples na hii ni kwa inaonyesha kwamba kuna majaribio mengi ambayo yangewakumba wa Mungu akawaambia inuka na muombe maana wakati sio mzuri ili msije kujaribiwa na akawaambia i know the spirit is willing ninajua roho inapenda but your body is weak lakini mwili ni dhaifu praise the lord jesus christ Amen. now the will is out to the spirit basi kupenda ni ndani ya roho the will is out to the spirit and even the soul roho ha kupenda ni ndani ya mwili na pia nafsi but also the obedience comes to the flesh na pia utiifu unakuja kwa mwili when god asks us to obey it's not the spirit to obey wakati mungu anasema tutii sio roho inatii because our spirits are God. Maana roho zetu ni pastors already told us in the morning here. Tungaje ametuambia asubuhi. We be born of God. Ya kwamba the Bible says when we are born of God over comes the world. Anasema Yuda amezaliwa kwa Mungu anashinda. Because we are spirit beings we have been told. Sisi ni wa kiroho kama vile. And that the spirit doesn't have a problem with obeying. Na basi roho haina shida na kutii. It carries the will of the Father. Inatii na inabeba mapendo ya Mungu. The problem is our physical realms. Hali ni kwamba hali ya ya, ya kawaida. The problem is our physical beings. Shida ni kwamba hali yetu ya kimwili. It is the obedience of the flesh to the will of the spirit. Ni utiifu wa mwili ili kukidhi roho. Jesus tells them, I know your spirits are willing. Yesu akasema ninajua roho inapenda. You feel like you want to pray. Inakaa ni kana kwamba mnataka. But your body is weak. 
Lakini mimi you have to subject your bodies to the will of the spirit. That is obedience. Brethren. Pastor just again enlightened about the, the, the story of the children of Israel. When they were living Egypt, they were used to eating free food. Some preacher, some preacher made me, I don't know whether they challenged me or they made me feel bad. He that the food that the children of Israel were eating under slavery was better than some of the food that some of us are eating today. They were under slavery. They were, they, they were, they were they were suffering from morning till evening, building cities that were not theirs. When they were in the wilderness, they demanded Moses of the meat they were eating in Egypt. The good water they were drinking in Egypt. Every good food they were eating in Egypt. But they were under slavery. Yet some of us today are still praying to God. God for provision of food. When someone in slavery is eating better than us who say we are free. And said we should have our spirits elevated to pray for more than food. Because the enemy is roaring looking for who to defer. Why you're looking for food, the enemy is looking for you as his own food. As our bodies are weak in our weaknesses, the body, the, the, the spirit is not able to fight again. The Bible says that the flesh is always at battle with the spirit. Every time they are fighting against each other. So where you put your most strength is where the, the battle is going to be won from. Isaiah 1 chapter 9 verse 19. The Bible says that if you are willing and obedient. You will eat of the good of the land. So God is separating for us. It is one thing to have the will. And it is another to obey the will. I hope I am walking with someone. I am going so very fast that I am up with time. God is differentiating for us. And there is a there is one thing to have the will. And it's another to obey the will. So the Lord is saying that if we are willing and obedient, we will eat of the good of the land. It is because the will and that obedience supersedes the will. Kuti kuna shida Yes, that's why again Scripture tells us obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. Amen. We can give a lot that we want to give in the house of God. We can bring our children and put them in the house of God like Hannah did to Samuel. We can bring all the monies onto the altar. But if we are not obedient enough to do what money is not going to do, and subject our emotions and, 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 and flesh to the working of God. There may not be a lot of change done in the spiritual realm. The rich young man comes to Jesus. And says, Jesus, what should I do? For me to have the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus tells him, uh, 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 love the poor. And you, you should obey your father, obey your mother, obey all the commandments. Now Jesus told him to obey all the commandments. Right? And it was like, I've done all those things. I've exhausted everything. And Jesus tells him, okay, that's good. Yes, the first sell your, 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 your possessions, give them to the poor and come and follow me. 
The Bible says this young man felt he was abused actually. Because the Bible said that he was tremendously rich. He would rather give a portion of his money to the church. He could, apart from just selling everything, to come and wholly submit to Jesus. Now, this man had the will to see the kingdom of God. He had the desire to commune with God. But his physical wouldn't allow him to subdue. Praise the Lord, brethren. Amen. Every day our flesh is fighting our spirit. You start prayer two, three days down the road and you again collapse. You start evangelism it is because we have to subject the flesh to the will of God. We have to subject the flesh to the will of God. Will of God. And that when we are going to see the good of the land, you see when we talk about the good of the land, we talk about the good of the land. We are talking of fear of maybe. 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 Fear of Maybe we are talking of the good food that we admire. Maybe we are talking about the great businesses. But listen, the will of God is that all men come to the knowledge of the Christ. That all men come to the knowledge of the Christ. What is more better than men giving life to God? That is a good of the land. That is a good of the land. The Bible says, wise is a man who wins souls. Wise is a man that wins souls. Wise is a man that wins souls. Because when you win souls, you're taking over territories. You're taking over territories. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why God says that ask of me of nations. And I'll give them unto you. Ask of me of the nations. Niulize mataifa. Pray that I give you the nations. And I'll give them unto you. Now he's not asking us to ask for passports and visas to go to the US. This is how the nations started. Out of Jacob. Uh, out of Isaac, two, two, two boys were, were born, right? Yeah. And that's when nations start coming up. Every child that was born for Isaac or for Jacob and Esau was a nation. Every child was a nation of their own. When we begin seeing the nation of Manasseh, when we begin seeing every nation that the Bible is speaking about, it came with one individual. Ishmael also goes and becomes a nation of his own. He starts expanding over the world. The nations are not the countries we are, we are dreaming of going to. The nations are the people through whom God wants to deliver the world through. Those are the nations that God is asking us to call unto Him. And He said that when we ask them, He's going to give them unto us. We have the will to do that. To now bend the obedience to that is a problem. I'm going to be mentioning a few scriptures as we run through. And we finish. Now, I want to give us, want to give us a story about Peter. When Jesus is going back to, to the Father, he calls Peter and asks him, Peter, do you love me? Peter says yes. And he tells him, feed my sheep. He, he does that for three good times. Remember, this is a man that denied him at the time of crucifixion. He denied him three good times. He says, no, I don't know that man. And people like, no, but the way you speak, the way you talk, the way you do things, 
You can never hide from God. However much you might want to get yourself covered up. God will soon expose you out because he has a purpose for you. Now Jesus officially hands over the church to Peter. It tells him, feed my sheep. God is said, he is even hands his mother to James and I mean to Peter tells him feed my sheep, even my mother, take care of me. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But when we come to the book of Acts, God gives, brings a vision to him. And tells him that he had things. Because the Bible says that he had gone here. Let me get that two verse for us. I've written it somewhere here. And then he said, uh, Acts chapter 10, if we can read Acts chapter 10, verse, I'll start from verse 9. Matendo wa mitume sura ya kumi aya tisa Hata siku ya pili walipokuwa wakisafiri na kukaribia mji Petro alipanda juu darini kwenda kuomba ya pata saa sita za mchana Akaungwa na jaa sana akataka kula lakini walipokuwa wakiandaa roho yake ikazimia Akaona mbingu zimefunuka na chombo kikishuka kama nguo nguo, nguo kubwa inateremshwa kwa pembe zake nne hata nchi 12 ambayo ndani yake walikuwa mo aina zote za wanyama wenye miguu minne na hao watambao na ndege wa angani kisha sauti kamjia kusema ondoka petro utinje ule lakini petro akasema hasha bwana kwa maana sijakula kamwe kitu kilicho kichafu au najisi 15 sauti kamjia mara ya pili ikamwambia Vilivyo takaswa na mungu, usiviite wewe na jisi. Jambu hili, likatendeka, usahi wa kumina sita, mara tatu, kisha kile chongo, kikapokewa kika tena mingui. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God has called Peter to take care of the church. Buwana anamuambia Petro, atuinze kanisa. He didn't specify who to take care of. Hakusema ni nani ambaya na tunza. He told him, take care of in Peter's mind, he thought Jesus has told him, take care of the Jews. So Peter thinks that he's been called to minister to the Jews alone. We know very well Peter was so much enthusiastic with Jesus. He is so much now to do the works of the Christ. He was always available to answer, answer the questions that Jesus would have to ask. He was so close to Jesus. And even when they had gone to pray with Jesus, no. Jesus tells them, pray so that you don't be tempted. But they kept on sleeping. When the time for temptation came, it's Peter that came out with a knife to slaughter someone. If he had, if he had, if he had submitted to the will of the Christ, he would learn that the battle that Christ is going through right now doesn't need a sword. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And then this time he is telling, he's telling God that you see, you know, I cannot eat these things because I've never eaten them before. If you read chapter 11 and chapter 12 again of Acts, you are going to see that story being repeated by Peter himself again. This is the time God was calling Cornelius. The Bible says he was a God-fearing man. He did good things for God. But he was not a Jew. He was a Roman centurion. And then God wants Peter to pray for this man to get saved. And the Lord tells this man, go and send your people to Peter to come and pray for you. He will tell 
tell you what to do. And then God is appearing to Peter is like I cannot do these things here. When Peter finally goes to the Roman to the Roman centurion's home, he realizes it was God telling me that I should minister to them and to all the people, even the Gentiles. Now you ask yourself why? Peter is the person Jesus officially left the church for. But Paul comes from the back. The person who never stayed with Jesus. Who never sat under the teachings of Jesus. He does tremendous things that Peter did. Okay, we read of the miracles that Peter did. We read of the handkerchiefs that were healing people. We read of, 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 of his shadow healing the people. But let's read of the accounts of the what Peter did and Paul did. Paul reaches a time and says there is no other foundation that man is going to lay apart from the foundation I have laid through Christ. Where was Paul to lay the foundation? He had the will to lay the foundation. But the obedience to go to the Gentiles he did have. And that deprives Peter of the service of the Gentiles. And Paul comes and takes over everything and moves everywhere to preach the gospel to everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit unto us as I finish. It is not enough to say I want to. It is not enough to say I want to sing. No, it's not enough to say I want to start going out for evangelism. It's not enough for you to want to join the intercessory department. It's not enough for you to want to be an usher. The, the Bible says that faith without action is dead. Faith without action is dead. Let us generate a will to become emotional. Let it become let it become actionable. What is good to move God is not because you have the will to do it. What makes you different from that person that has seated in church every day? You must leave your house to come to church every day. You have the will to come to church every day. But what is good to set you apart? Is you going that step further and say, God, now I am here, use me. Let me give us another short story. The Bible says God is in heaven and is asking himself questions with the angels and Jesus and everyone there. And he himself, who shall we say? Who are we going to say? Who shall we? Of all the people that was, who are we going to say? Now the Bible says, Isaiah hears these words. God is asking in heaven, who shall we say? And the angels are like, you know for us we cannot go you know, we, we cannot be seen see, maybe they may not hear us see, you know, and the discussion is going on now Isaiah needs no more times and periods of meeting up with God for prayer that day Isaiah didn't go to ask God to send him it was his time to commune with God. It was his time just to come to the presence, the place that he has communion with God every day. And then he has this question rounding up in heaven. Isaiah didn't just change. He says, God, here I am, send me. 
Mungu niko hapa nitume. Here I am send me. Niko hapa nitume. And that's how Isaiah starts prophesying the coming of the Christ. Na hivyo ndivyo Isaya alianza kutoa unabii kuhusu kile kwa Yesu. Isaiah starts telling people prepare your parts. Na akaanza kuambia watu tengeneze njia. Tengeneze njia. God is at hand. Maana ufalme wa Mungu ni hapa. Isaiah starts saying that I hear a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Kama kwamba kusema kwamba nasikia sauti ya mtu aliyenikani. This man receives a commission. Huyu mtu akapata kazi jukumu that he was not ready for. Ya kwamba hakuwa tayari kwa. He didn't go to pray for that one. Hakwenda kuombea hiyo kazi. But his obedience to receive the sanctioning or the sending took him there. Lakini kutii kwa kupokea hili. And Isaiah proclaims the coming of the Christ. Na Isaiah anatangaza proclaims the birth of Jesus Christ. Anatangaza kuzaliwa kwa Yesu. proclaims how Jesus is going to live in and unto crucifixion. Anatangaza vile Yesu atakavyoishi na vile atasikia. It was beyond the will to go and pray. Ilikuwa ni kando na kutaka kwenda kuomba. He was so so teachable. Alikuwa she was telling us here. Alikuwa anatuambia if we can be faithful enough. Ni wapi unaweza kuwa mwana? If you can be available enough. Ni wapi unaweza pata? If you can be teachable enough. Ni wapi unaweza pata? What is what going to make us make differences today? Hiyo ni itatufanya tuwe tofauti. Let us and chat and I tell us again. Wapendwa ninawaambia leo. The world is growing so every day. Dunia inaenda kuwa kali kila wakati. And the gospel should become stronger every day. Because the world cannot oppress down the gospel. When persecution arose in the early church, even when the apostles were running away to different places, wherever they went, they had small cohorts to share scripture. They would gather, they would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They would gather in their separate places to share scripture. They was boiled in oil because of the gospel and we are here today crying because we are not able to get food to eat you can't go out to witness Jesus to someone because you didn't get food yesterday what is greater food or the Christ that I've just told us here the food we are crying for is not even better than the children of Israel that were in slavery or Egypt. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now these people gave their all. And they said that we are here not preserving the gospel because we have rambles at church. I was speaking to a brother yesterday. I spoke to a brother yesterday and told me I stopped going to church because we had was in church and we had issues at church and for I stopped the things of church I'm still thinking if I should go back to church yes myself Jesus if, if, if these were the apostles that had the gospel at first would we still be talking about church church today I'm not talking about us having big businesses 
I'm not talking about us even buying plots in Nairobi. I'm not even prophesying for us to buy vehicles in Nairobi. I'm not even prophesying to us that we start building in those plots that we build and we build probably. I am asking us. I was saying that the creation is lying in expectation of the manifestation of the sons of God. The sons of expectation of the sons of God. Manifestation of the sons of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Much of their prayer crying. He was the church this, the church that. Now, when they need someone that is going to answer a question for them, the question of question science is not going to answer. The question money is not going to answer. The person who is going to answer that question is here struggling for food, Mokimo. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The people who are supposed to answer these questions are busy looking at who did not sing well at church today. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The people that the world is waiting to manifest are the people who are seated back because they don't have feet for their children. The creation is waiting for us, ladies and gentlemen. Let us live small battles. Let us live small battles. Our flesh will always fight against the spirit. But where do you put your investment? The Bible says that where your heart is, where your riches are, that is where your heart dwells as well. Where are your riches, brethren? I am calling us today. There is a lot in the heavenly realm. When God says that there is a lot of, 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 of harvest, but the laborers are few. Where are the laborers? We are fearing because we, we are fearing to be stoned. We are fearing to to have a friend see us that they saw us do stuff with them last year and we are fearing to see for them to see us today again preaching the gospel. Okay. Have mercy upon upon Paul. Now, Paul was a man of God. Who yesterday killed someone. He killed people actually. He beat some of them. But today he is coming to tell you Jesus is Lord. If Paul would do that, then how about you who, who did whatever you did? I don't know whatever you did. If you're fearing because of something you did and you fear they are going to see you and, and they're not going to believe you, have mercy upon Paul. It is not a will mixed with our obedience. God calls for our obedience. There is a lot that we can do just because we've obeyed the Lord. Each and every one of us here can do a lot for God just because we are obedient. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me tell us, if Christ wasn't obedient enough to come, if Christ wasn't obedient enough to come, of course he had the will. Of course he had the will. That's why he was like, who should we send? The last time I was here, I remember telling us that Christ is a, is a physical manifestation of God. I think that was back 2021. I think that's the time, the last time. I remember telling us that Christ is a physical manifestation of God. So God knew what's going to happen. 
Mungu alitoa kile kitakachotendeka. He had the will to serve man. Alikuwa anakupenda kwa 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 watu. But again it had to take all obedience. Na pia ilibidi kuwa na utiifu. To put on a body that is going to be persecuted. Kuvaa mwili ambao unakuja kudhihakiwa. So he could save us. Ili atuokoe. If Christ obeyed that much. He wapo Yesu alitiki wa Christ. He loved us even up to death. That's how obedient he was to his word. Hivyo ndivyo alikuwa na upendo katika dunia. Ni mengi ni shall we be? Ni mengi ni kani yapi tunaweza fanya? And then what shall we do in this? Ni nini tunaweza fanya kwa hiyo? The same verse he read for us in the morning. Katika kifungu tulichosoma asubuhi. Romans 8:26. Warumi 8:26. We are full. This body is full of weakness. Mwili huu una udhaifu. It is full of weakness. Ina udhaifu. And it's not unto you to have it obeyed. Na sio wewe uutii. But the spirit of God helps us in our weaknesses, right? Bali roho ya Mungu na spirit of God helps us in our weakness. Roho ya Mungu anatusaidia katika udhaifu. The spirit of God helps us in our weakness. Roho ya Mungu anatusaidia katika udhaifu. And Jesus said, Yes, I am going to send my spirit. Ninaenda kutuma roho. Who is going to help you to witness for me? Anaenda kuwasaidia. He is not going to speak for himself. Aende kuzungumzia. He is going to speak of me. Bali anaenda kuzungumza. The words he will speak are not his own. Hivi atakachozungumza. But what you will hear he will speak. Bali hivi Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're grappling with the weakness in your flesh, how am I going to start? Jesus has released His Spirit unto for us. Yes, for me, actually, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is going to help us in our weakness. Roho anaenda kusaidia katika kuzungumza. Going to help us. Tunaitaji msaidi. I request us to leave one thing behind. Nigependa tuwache jambo moja ni. I always speak this severely, especially when I'm speaking to youth. Nigependa kusaidia hili aswa kwa mji. Though here we are in a mix up we, we we have this thing we say that that's my weakness ninapenda kusema kuna vile upenda kusema kwamba huu ndio udhaifu wangu someone tells you i i don't love the way you do that thing mtu anakuambia sipendi vile unavyofanya hivi that's my weakness by the way unasema huu ndio udhaifu wangu i've grown up hivi ndio nimekuwa i don't love the way you come to church like you unajua sipendi vile unavyokuja kanisani umechelewa that's my weakness i i i have failed to have Unajibu huu ni udhaifu wangu nimeshindwa kufanya kazi. It's your weakness to come to church now. Huu ni udhaifu wangu kuja kanisani nimechelewa. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I don't I don't like the way you speak to people. Sipendi vile unazungumza na watu. You speak so many to people. Unazungumza kwa ukahidi kwa watu. Sasa mtadu That's how you say. That's my weakness. Hivyo ndio vijana wanasema huu ni udhaifu. And that's how weakness becomes wickedness. Na hii hivi ndio udhaifu unakuwa uovu because we are not ready to work on it. Kwa sababu hatupo tayari kuifanya kazi. What makes the difference? Nini kinabainisha? Is that yes, I know this is a weakness and I am willing to have it worked on. Eh ninajua ni udhaifu lakini ninatamani kuifanya kazi. Is there someone that can help me in my congregation to work on this? Je, huyu ndio mtu tunaweza huyu ndio tunaweza saidiana na Can I align with God to help me work on this? Je, ninaweza shirikiana na Mungu kunisaidia kuondoa hii? Because says that Christ is made perfect in our weaknesses. Kwa sababu tunategezwa kuwa wenye nguvu kutokana na udhaifu wetu. Christ is made perfect in our weaknesses. Kristo anafanyika Hodari katika udhaifu and his power is made perfect in our weaknesses. Na nguvu zake zinatengenezwa na nguvu kwenye udhaifu. So what does that mean? Na ina maana he says that if you lift your weaknesses and give them unto me. Ya kwamba ukiinua udhaifu wako na unipe. I will take your weaknesses and use it for the greatness of the world. Nitachukua udhaifu na kufanya kuwa nguvu katika Now the problem is we have taken our weaknesses and have made it our pillow. Na tumechukua udhaifu tumeweka kama pillow. It has become an excuse why we are not doing something. Na imekuwa ni ni vijiji sababu ni sababu gani atufanyi hii? Jesus asked the disciples. Yesu akauliza wanafunzi. When the son of man comes back. Mwana wa Adamu anapokuja. Will he find faith? Je, atapata imani? I want to ask you. Nataka kukuuliza. When Jesus comes back. Ivapo Yesu anakuja. He find you weak. Atakupata dhaifu. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus was on earth, yes, he spoke and said the kingdom of God is at hand. Akasema ufalme wa Mungu umewatia. Those were thousands of years ago. Ilikuwa ni miaka maelfu. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. If during that time Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand. Iwapo nyakati hizo Yesu akasema ufalme wa Mungu umewatia. How much closer is it today? Basi ni karibu, imefika karibu kiasi gani leo? Think about that. Hebu fikiria hii. Father we bless you for this great afternoon. Baba tunakushukuru kwa ajili ya nafasi hii.
We thank you because you're faithful enough to preserve us. Tunakushukuru kwa sababu wewe ni mwaminifu katika kutuhifadhi. We pray O God that you help us enhance your will in our lives. Tunaomba Bwana ili kutusaidia kutukidhi katika maisha haya. May not the weaknesses of our flesh fail us to perceive and pursue spiritual benefits. Wacha udhaifu usiwe chanzo chetu sisi kutopata hali inayostahili. Give us the grace to overcome the powers of the flesh. Tupe neema ya kustahimili nguvu za mwili. To overcome the desires of the flesh. Kutamaa kushinda kutamani kwa mwili. We pray that you intervene in that in us more than we have even ever thought of. Tunaomba uingilie kati ndani yetu kuliko vile tulivyofikiria. Bible says that you are more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Biblia inasema kwamba una uwezo wa kufanya yote na yale makuu. Above all things that we can ever think about. Zaidi ya yote tunayoweza kufikiria. Lord in our own flesh we have failed. Bwana katika mili yetu tumeanguka. In our own flesh we keep falling. Kila mara tunaanguka. But Lord may you empower us with your spirit again. Bwana utukidhi katika roho wako so that we are to overcome the world that is facing us. Ili tuweze kushinda ulimwengu ulio mbele yetu. Father, we don't want to come and you tell us you never knew us. Bwana, tusije tukafika kiwango cha useme utujui. We don't want to come and say that we did the things and yet you did not recognize them. Bwana, tutaki kuja kusema kwamba tulifanya hii na huku tujua. Give us your spirit to empower us O God. Tupe roho wa kuweza kutustahimili. Empower us O Jehovah. Kutupa nguvu. In the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. your grace carry us through. Wacha neema yako Tubebe. Even when the world goes more berserk in the, in the wilderness. Licha kwamba dunia imeenda sana katika katika hali. We are being empowered to bring him back to the salvation of the Christ. Tumepewa nguvu ya kuweza kukidhi wokovu wa Kristo. May our church be the icon in this land. Hebu nafara katika kanisa letu likawe chanzo cha maalibukizi. That is going to bring revival to this generation. Ili kuleta uvuvio katika kizazi. It's going to bring revival in our family. Kileta uvuvio katika hali familia. In the name of Jesus Christ. Katika jina la Yesu. We pray over our families. Tunaombea familia zetu. There's no family member of us is going to get lost. Ya kwamba hakuna mtu wa familia atakayepotea. But they are going to be the reason why men come to you. Lakini watakuwa sababu ya watu kuja kwako. Because they are going to exhibit the greatness of God. Kwa sababu wanaenda kudhibiti ukuu wa Mungu. From our past to our grandchildren. Kutoka kwa wazazi wetu hadi kwa vitukuu. May we express the full knowledge of God. Tunaomba kusababisha ukuu wa Mungu. We pray O Lord. Tunaomba Bwana that guide us in our weakness. Ya kwamba utuongoze kutokana na upendo. Help us over to the other end. Ili tukavuke hadi nyangambo zingine. That we will not struggle with sin. Ya kwamba hatutapambana na dhambi. That we will not struggle with the desires of the flesh. Hatutangangana na mambo ya ya mwili. That we will not struggle with the things that take us back. Haita kuwezana na mambo ambayo yanatufundisha duniani. Ili tusimame wima. And hold to us a prize that you set ahead for us. Na tusimame katika taji uliyoweka mbele yetu. In the name of Jesus Christ katika jina la Yesu. Thank you Lord for this day. Asante Yesu. Receive the praise and the honor. In Jesus name we pray. Katika jina la Yesu.